a sixth grade teacher posed this following mathematical problem to her class. She said, a wealthy man dies and leaves $10 million. One-fifth is to go to his wife, one-fifth is to go to his son, and one-sixth to his nephew. The rest is to go to charity. Now, what does each person get? After a long silence in the classroom, one little fellow raised his hand in complete sincerity in his voice, and he answered, a good lawyer. <laughs> he was probably right. When it comes to money matters, we tend to take things serious. Have you noticed that almost everything you buy now has a health warning on it? Some of the warnings don't make great sense. I once saw a bottle of sleeping tablets or pills with the warning, caution may cause drowsiness. There was also a fishing lure that said, harmful if swallowed. And finally, a washing machine with the advice that you don't put people in it. If you ever go to a junkyard, you will notice that it's packed with items that people felt they could not live without. They skimped and they saved. They carried it home and looked after it. But now it doesn't work, or it's been replaced by the next big thing. Perhaps money should have a health warning on it too. Like, beware, you can never get enough of this. It may possibly harm your health, and you cannot take it with you. <laughs> Don't get me wrong. We need money to live, to have food, to have somewhere to live, to get an education and a job. It only becomes an issue when there is a lack of balance. In today's parable, Jesus doesn't tell the man that he is evil, but Jesus does say he was a fool. It doesn't make for easy listening. We'd say he was obviously a very good businessman if he had managed to fill the barns. We admire abundance. Jesus said a man's life does not consist in the abundance of possessions. Why would Jesus call him a fool then? It was not because he saved, because we know that Jesus saved. With the miracle of the loaves and fish, he sent baskets around to collect scraps so that nothing would be wasted. Maybe he was considered a fool because he had lost that sense of balance in life. It wasn't that he was rich, but his attitude to his wealth. The story is told of a man who traveled to a far-off primitive land intent on becoming rich. This primitive land didn't use money as we have it, but they used shells and beads off the beach as their currency. So he set about accumulating a large amount of these beads and shells that the natives used as money. When he had accumulated more of this kind of wealth than anyone else in that land, he was admired for his financial wisdom. When he came home to England, though, he discovered that he was a beggar, even though he had a shipload of what people thought was wealth. The shells and beads were of no use to him in a world that honored a different currency. So what might be the motto of that story? 
perhaps we could be in the same position. It is important to know the currency that you need. You might be rich here, but not rich before God. Did you know that of the first three Gospels of Matthew, Mark, and Luke, one out of every six verses relates in some way to money? Sixteen of the 34 parables in those three Gospels relate to money or the misuse of it. There are over 500 verses in the Bible that relate to prayer. There are 2,500 that relate to money. No one who seriously follows Jesus is going to be able to avoid the subject. Jesus precedes the parable today by the admission, watch out, be on your guard against all kinds of greed. A man's life does not consist of the abundance of possessions. And it's true. Our life isn't about what we own. Sometimes the most valuable things in life cannot be bought. Elizabeth McKee tells a story of something that recently happened that puts things into perspective. She said that in the States, if somebody gets a pay rise, you go out, you're happy, you celebrate, you have a few drinks. Then she contrasts this to the celebration with the lives of people in Mali. That's in West Africa. And in that country, she said, she said that if a child lives to their first birthday, they celebrate, celebrate by giving that child a name. They don't name their children before then because the mortality rates are so high. Families that have children over five years old are thought to be wealthy. Between disease and high food prices, the chances of having multiple children over five are very rare. Here, she says, you can find the true meaning of wealth. We can think of that for a moment. If you have children over five years old, you are wealthy or rich. How much would you take for the health of your child? If you have people who love you and you're healthy and they're healthy, you are rich. I don't care about what the balance sheet says. If you have enough to eat and clothes to wear and a home to shelter from the heat or from the cold, and if you have more than a little more to share, you are very rich. In the New Testament times, the Romans had a proverb, money is like seawater. The more you drink, the thirstier you become. Jesus never said, take up your cross, follow me, and you will be financially secure. Instead, he told us to follow him, to serve God, and any of our brothers and sisters who are in need of help. In the Old Testament, healthy, large families and wealth were considered a blessing from God. You might remember the book of Job. Job had been doing quite well. And when all was taken from him by God, he thought that he had sinned. And what did he do to deserve it? On some of the television stations here, you will see television evangelists and preachers who seem to be constantly fundraising to attract all kinds of money and gifts. This money usually benefits them and no one else. But that isn't really Jesus' way. That's not the Christian way. That's why the focus on the farmer in Jesus' parable is disturbing. 
He was caught in the illusion of success. He thought he'd made it, only to discover that he'd been seeking the wrong things in life. At best, God was on the periphery of his vision. Success and possessions were the central focus. He was caught in the trap of giving life to the giving in to the attractions that the world offered and not what God might offer. He was not striving to receive the kingdom and blessings of God. That is why the rich farmer was pitiful. That is why he was foolish. Lord, help us to have a healthy balance in life. We need money to live. Indeed, the church needs money to continue its work. But it is all a means to an end. The end is not to be wealthy, but to have eternal life. Lord, guide us safely along the path that leads to eternal life.